We begin begin 12 lines down at the top of the Yavid, where we continue with the Allah of the next Mishnah. We can continue on this theme of this parakash Rabba regarding when there's a, a notification regarding someone dying. What's the Allah? Again, we speak about when the husband goes overseas, when the wife goes overseas, and its implications. Sometimes uh, we discuss in today's Daf are. Various halachas of a bentes, of a nine year old, regarding Yibum and Kedushin. So we begin the current daf, we get 12, line, 12 lines down at the top of the Yaman, where we begin the halacha of the next Mishnah. A, a unique Mishnah regarding a unique case. Amrulai, they told to a person, Mesa Ishtacha, your wife passed away. Venasa Achlisa Milbiya, so he marries her paternal sister, which means to say they had from the same father. But it wasn't from the same mother, which he's allowed to do. Once his wife dies, he's allowed to marry her sister. Then they subsequently told him that Mesa, that the second wife died, and Menasa Achesa, he married the sister of the second woman, Me'ima, from her mother. Meaning they were maternal sisters, not paternal. They didn't have the same father. What's the significance of that? Comes out, if you look at the chart, you'll see that also that the third one was unrelated to the first one because this uh, sister is not, uh, they didn't have this, like for example, Dina, if you just take a look, you'll see they're all the same idea. So once you get the idea, it's simple. There's uh, two parents, Yaakov and Leah, had Dina. Well, Yechebed was from the same mother as Dina, but from a different father. And each one of them, so therefore comes out that Sarah is going to be unrelated to Dina. Yechebet will be related to Dina, Sarah related to Yechebet, but it's only to the one before him because they're either, it's going to switch off from paternal and maternal to paternal and maternal, but you're only going to be sharing one parent, which therefore you're unrelated to the one that's before that. So this is really the theme of all these cases as the Mishnah continues. Mesa, he then was told that she died, so he married the sister of the third one, which was Mi'avia from her father, and not from the mother. Comes out that the fourth one was unrelated to the second one, and for sure not related to the first one. And then they went and they told the Mesa that she died. So he went and married her, her maternal sister, which was unrelated to the third one. Okay, so that's all these cases of this individual lady. But then, comes out, they told him that Benim Tzukul and Kayonis, actually they were all alive. None of them had died, it was a mistake. So now, all these women that he had married, all of them were alive. So the question is now, what's the status with these wives? So the Mishnah explains. He says, Mutter, Berishayna, Obishlishes, Obchamishas, like we have the green checks for those that he's permitted in. Those, the first, the third, and the fifth woman, he's permitted to maintain because the first, third, and fifth are not related to each other. Now, although, what do you mean the third one is the sister of the second one? That's okay, because the condition of the second one never took effect. Because she was a chaysisha of the first one. And therefore, the, the second one is like the woman that he violated or seduced. Because it was never marriage, because it was the sister of the first one. The condition cannot, cannot be tipped, it's not And the Bryce on the next half tells us, if a man is ma'anas a woman, he's permitted to marry her daughter, to marry her relatives. Because the Torah only makes it forbidden by a chaysisha, where if Kedushin doesn't take effect, it's not his sister. It's not, I mean, it's not his wife, so it's not going to be his wife's sister. So Sarah, uh, this third woman, is permitted to Levi because although it's a chay sister of Yechebe that he was quote unquote married to, he wasn't married to her. It was a new Sasa. He thought he was married, but it wasn't. And therefore, it's permitted. So to the fifth woman. Even though she's the sister of the, thir- of the fourth one, she's permitted because the condition of the third one took effect. Comes out that the beer by the fourth one, which is the sister of the third one, but it's the beer of Znus. And therefore the fifth one, not going to be forbidden in her. So says the Mishnah, so this first, third, and fifth that he is married to, hence, if let's say this lady dies, who purchases to her say So if let's say the Yavim comes along and the Yavim, one of those three, the first, the third, and the fifth, well, that will exempt all the other co-wives because that's a legitimate wife. But for us, but this lady is forbidden in woman number two because of the first one, and by woman number four because of the third one. And, and hence, if let's say one of the, if let's say Levi dies, 
and one of the brothers comes to do Eden, if they would do it to Yechev or Rivka, obviously this number two and number four, they would not accept the other co-wives because they weren't considered wives of this lady. Now, Mishnah says another case. It's just one step off. Vimbala Shnia. Let's say this lady had be with the second woman. La'achar Mises Rishayna. After the first one died, which is going to explain, meaning it turns out the truth was only by the first woman. All others were lies. As in the first case, they were all a mistake, all a lie. But in this case, the first one was actually true. The first one actually did die. And he had, he was, he got married to the second one after the first one already died. Oh, now it just shifts by one. So now, Mutta Bishni Bravias. Now he's actually permitted by number two and number four. But, and, and the preachers are saying, and if, if the Yavim would have, would marry one of those, it would exempt the Kohen. But, but us the Bishlisha is the But he's going to be forbidden in the third and in the fifth. The third because of the second one, the fifth because of the fourth one. The baby is achas man petachas achas, and to be with one of them and not exempt the court, meaning since we're one off, so it's not any more that one, three, and five. To the contrary, this one, if let's say she's the one that died, so she was a legitimate marriage, which would make her a chaysishta. She was a legitimate marriage, which would make her a chaysishta, whichever way you, however you say, it, let's say this was the one who died. This is how the picture is illustrating. Milka died. If let's say we're going this way from left to right, whichever one. But the point is, is that number one died. So now number two actually was a marriage. Well, the number three can't work out. Well, that number four was a marriage, but number five can't work out. So that's just you're shifting one number um, based on that. Now the Mishnah really segues into a different discussion. Continue on the halachas of Yibum, but more related to that of a minor. <coughs> Says the Mishnah, Ben Tesha Shonav Yemechad, a nine year old boy. <laughs> He makes it problematic for the brothers. And the brothers make it problematic for him. Ella, but there's one difference. Who The nine-year-old boy, only if he does be it initially, but not at the end, as he was going to explain, only then does he make it problematic for his brothers. But the brothers make it problematic for him, whether it was in the beginning or at the end. So as the Mr. Mr. illustrated the case of how so. So the Mishnah explains. A nine-year-old boy gets married to his Yavam. So Pasa de Achen, his Bia is going to make it problematic for the other brothers to do Yivam. Now, Bola Achen, let's say the brothers have Bia with the Yavam even at the end. Or Vasa Maimer, they do on Har Maimer, or Nasneget, they give Raget, they Chotzer, they do Chalitzda. They're going to make it problematic for the nine-year-old boy. Why is that? Didn't he really do Bia? Yeah, because the Bia of a nine-year-old it's not a full-fledged acquisition. It's like a regular mimer. And the Gemara told us, that you could have mimer, ged, be a chalitza after mimer. Mimer is not a full Kenyan. So therefore, if the boy, the nine-year-old boy did a bia, it's like a mimer. And therefore, the other brothers who are adults, they could ruin it for him, even at the end, by doing a mimer or a ged or whatever it is, because of the fact that he's just a nine-year-old boy. Now, now the Gemara goes back, to the halacha, the, the ratio of the Mishnah, which spoke about these two cases about when the man hears about his wife died and then he marries her sister, her sister, her sister, her sister. So that, that was the first case, that they really was all lies. Second case was that the first one really did die. Like the case said that, oh, he married the second one, Oh, then he's permitted in the second and the fourth, and he's permitted in the third and the fifth. So the Gemara asks, Atar Kulu, isn't all the cases, I mean, even the Reisha, Lav Lacha Mises Rishayin, you know, aren't they all after the death of the first one? What's this case different? They're all, he heard that she died, she died, she died, what's the difference over here? No, Mavshesha doesn't know what it means, Lacha Mises Rishayin Nevadai, meaning the actual one definitively did die. Then he married the second one, that's where it's going to shift by one number, the second and the fourth, they're going to be permitted, then the third and the fifth. Are <coughs> now back to the second half of the Mishnah, when we had this Ben Tasha Shonam Bechulu. Regarding the nine-year-old boy that we said that he's going to be placed al dea achen, the achen placing al yada, he's going to make it problematic for the brothers to do him, and they're going to make it problematic for him. So the Gemara explains the halacha of Mishnah. Ben Tesh Hashanah miyamechan, a nine-year-old boy, chilo, if it's in the beginning of the process, possibly he's going to make it invalid. But say at the end, loy possibly he's not going to make it invalid. Meaning, if an adult made a mimer before the nine-year-old's bia. So the nine-year-old's bia is not going to make the, the adult's mimer invalid. 
Usually, if one does a maimer, another one's a get. Does a get, they could ruin each other because it's not full fledged kinyanim, and the other ones get will ruin the other one's maimer. So the the boy's bia will not make a flaw in the adult's maimer. So the gemara asks, really? But Tony Rabbi Zvid Bader Boishia he says, "Oh, it's a maimer, but you've empty quarter brisa." If someone does a maimer in his yavama, the achkar ba ochem, and then his brother who shu ben tesh on mechad alaha, then the nine year old brother does bia with her pasla. He does make it invalid. So Amade said, wait, we have to amend this. That Bia, the nine year old's Bia, you're right, that's Paslach al Basad. That would invalidate even at the end. But Mimer, the nine year old's Mimer, that's what we meant to say. If it's Trill in the beginning, Paslach's going to make it invalid for the other brothers to do even. But Basad, at the end, you're right, like Paslach won't make it invalid. I said, really? Well, Bia al Basad, Paslach, that's what you're amending that to say? that. The nine year old's B would be problematic even at the end. But we learned in our Mishnah, we said, we said, yes, the, the nine year old boy can go ahead and, and, and be placed on the brothers just like they'd be placed on him. But we said, the difference is that he only invalidates in the beginning. And they can do it in the beginning and the end. And the Mishnah says, Kate said, how so? The Mishnah illustrates. Betesha should be a man of a nine year old boy, which has B on the Yavama. Now, it's explaining the first, the case right away, the Mishnah is explaining with Bia. Obviously, that the halacha that you're telling me that the nine-year-old boy is limited to Betchila is going on Bia. Because that's what you're saying, Kate said, you come and explain that the nine-year-old boy, we said, can only be placed in Betchila. And the case is with Bia. So how can you tell me that Bia is of his would pay, make a problem out of him at the end? Mishnah says clearly, only in the beginning. He says, well, no, no, chasur machasur. There's words missing in the Mishnah. You have to, this is how you have to read the Mishnah. Ben Tash Hashem Yemecha. Nine-year-old boy, who plays tchila like we have in our Mishnah, he invalidates only in the beginning. Ben plays the tchila beside the name validate the beginning at the end. Now, as classic chesur mezkev b'chayktani, just like a b'med b'mum. When do we say this? Ooh, it's it's not. There's words missing. It's it, there's a qualification. That's b'maimer. Ah, bia, but the nine-year-old's bia. Yeah, pesel zafel beside. It would invalidate even at the end, and that's what Mishnah says. Kate said, "How so?" Bentash and Mimech the Bali Bem the nine year old boy who does be with the Yavama, Pasla de Achen is going to make it problematic for the brothers, even if the brothers had originally made a mimer with the woman, because this Kate side is going on the last case, which was regarding the halacha of Besaif, which that's what I'm saying with the Bia would be problematic even at the end because that word's missing from our mission. But the Gemara asks on the Bryce we quoted before that a me is late. Does the is there for a yavam that's a cotton? Does he have a mimer klal al de achen to make it problematic for the brothers? Meaning we just amended with the halacha mishnah and the bride. So we said, okay, wait a second. Depends what for a bia. Yeah, the nine year old boy can make it problematic beginning and the end. For a mimer, no, that's only in the beginning. But says the is there even such a concept that the nine year old's mimer will make it problematic for the brothers at all, even in the beginning? But Tanya will learn another Bryce that says Ben Tesha on the Mechad of the nine year old boy. Who plays the Bedavar Echad? The Bryce is contrasting that the nine year old boy, he could make it problematic for the brothers in one way. But the brothers can make it problematic for him in four ways. How so? Who plays the Echad Bibia? He can only make it problematic for the brothers if he does B with his Yavam. But the brothers can make it problematic for him. Bibia, Bimayim, Bigad, Bachalit. So they have four weapons in their arsenal. He has one weapon. Why with one weapon? I thought he could do Maimur if he does in the beginning. Why is he saying he only could do it Bia? He says, oh, yes, but you're missing it. Bia, the Apostle Bia, Mitzchil Bia, like we explained, his Bia could ruin it for the brothers, whether it's in the beginning, before anyone did anything, or at the end, even after the brothers did, let's say, Maimur. So Psikhalei says, definitive. We'll quote that as a weapon in his arsenal. The Maimur, the Betchil Apostle, the Betchil Apostle, the Maimur, where it'll only make a problem out of the brothers if he did a Maimur initially. But if he does at the end, it's not, it's not going to make it invalid. So like Psikhalei, it's not definitive. We can't quote that as a weapon if it won't always work. But you're right, if he would do a mime in the beginning, the Bryce would agree that it would make it possible for the brothers. So that doesn't contradict the concept that we said. Hey, man, I'm so do we learn. I'm going to read the Mishmol. It says that yesh le get, that a nine year old boy even has a get to make it problematic for the brothers because the halach is once one of the brothers gives a get, that's what's called kibin shule bon shubla yivna. Because the context, the, 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 the word that's used in the Torah is like future text to tell you that. <coughs> Yeah, once you didn't build, you can't build anymore. Meaning once someone started separating the woman 
let's say by giving a get, then you can't do Yibam anymore. So the nine-year-old boy's get will also make a problematic. Again, we're showing you that it's not only the beer that he has, he even has like Shmuel says a get. He says, Yesh le he has Maimer. I tell him, I'll in the Brysa. Yesh le get, Yesh le Maimer. Tiberi Meir. Meir says that the nine-year-old boy has it. He can, his get can make a puzzle. His Maimer can make a problem for the brothers. Says the Gemara, really? Does Tiberi Meir like get? Does Tiberi really hold that a nine-year-old boy has a get? But time to in the Brysa. Tani Kama says, also be his ben Tesha Kamaima Bukadol. They made the nine-year-old boy's Bia the way an adult's mimer is, which is like this quasi type of, you know, it doesn't fully consummate the relationship. Remeir may says, also chalitza's ben tesha, they made the chalitza of a nine-year-old boy to reject kiget begadol, which is how an adult's get in the yavama will be, where, again, it doesn't fully reject the, the yavama, but it will make it problematic for the brothers, and therefore they need to do chalitza. So the chalitza of a nine-year-old boy will not totally exempt her, let her go free like a regular chalitza of an adult, it's only going to make it possible for the brother. Says the Gemara, then Isa, now if it's true, like you just said, there may holds that nine-year-old boy has a get. So why are you saying that his chalitza of the nine-year-old is like a get of a god oil? Listen, kigitoy. Say it like his get. You're telling me he has a get. So why are you saying his chalitza is like the get of a god oil? It's like his own get. Just like a get that everyone knows only rejects, it doesn't exempt, doesn't let it go free. So why you, if you, this is Rebbe who holds that he has a get to compare it to his own get. Don't compare it to the get of a gadol. So Rebbe Rebbe Yeshua, he says, no, I'll tell you why. If we didn't say that, it's because the Rebbe Yeshua, because by Rebbe Yeshua Isle, that he, that what happens is that, yes, the nine-year-old boy has a get, but Vizuta, it's less than the get of an adult, but his chalitza is like the get of a gadol. So therefore, we couldn't say kigitoi, because if you said like his own get, it would make it actually less than what it actually is, because the get of a nine-year-old, though he has one, is not as powerful as the get of an adult in the Yavama. But his chalitza, which is strong, it's chalitza, that's the biblical weapon, that's one level higher, which is like the get of a gun. So we couldn't say like his own get. And now the Gemara explains, what is the inferiority of the get of a nine-year-old in the get of a gun? So the Gemara explains, it depends who we're going like. And that is Lerim Liel, according to Rebim Liel, Dhamma that he says in get a get, that he says there's no get after a get. So Hanamili, this halacha, which we had previously in this Mesechta, that we had this machlekis regarding what's considered a get or what's not. So Hanamili, that's only talking about Gadl Achir Gadl. Let's say when a Gadl give a get in the Yavama and then another Gadl does, or a Katn Achir Katn. You have a Katn having given a get, and the other Katn comes to give a get. A Gadl Achir Katn Mahani. But if the, the gadol is giving a get after the minor, that will be effective. It will make it problematic for him and the relatives, etc., etc., which although generally we say once a get was given, then it can be. It's not true. The get of a gadol is more powerful. So that's according to Now, according to Rabban and Dami, yesh get get, that they hold that there is a get a get. So, we is going to be the difference. So, Hanamili, that's only because of a gadol. An adult after adult, a bekat nach or minor after minor. A bekat nach gadol mahani. But the cotton's get after the gadol's get, that's not going to be effective. So we see, again, according to either Lil or Rabbanon, there's going to be a nafkemina regarding how to qualify, how that relates to the minor's get versus that of the adult's get. And that's why it's important for a mayor to say that the chalitza of the nine-year-old is like the get of a gadol, because if he would have said like his own get, it would have been limited in a certain way in how it functions. But yes, of course, Rameir holds that the minor has a get, because we say that even as a minor, even as a get, again, if it's done betchila, but besides, it's only like our Mishnah says that if he's doing bia. The bia of the nine-year-old, as the way the Gemara mended it, to say, would work even, not only betchila, but even beside. Now, continue our look at the next Mishnah, again, continuing on the theme of the bia of a nine-year-old. Says the Mishnah, Ben Tes Shana Bia a nine-year-old boy, Shabal Yevimtoi, that does Yibum with his Yibam. Now he has a brother, which again could be his paternal brother or it could be a twin or whatever it is. But the point is, he has another brother that's nine years old that also has beer with the Obama. So, place al He's going to make it problematic for the first brother. Why? When the first brother already did Yiva. No, it's going to be like a classic case of Maimer Acha Maimer, where both of them are going to take effect. Because, as we explained already before, the bia of a nine-year-old is only like the mimer of an adult. Now, since you need to have a get from the second brother, because it's like his mimer which took effect, 
that would already say that the first husband cannot do the first yavam, cannot do yibum, because that's what's called kibun shulei bana shulei yibna. Once they started, whoever it is, whichever one of the brothers started not building, which is a get, is undoing, no one can build anymore. So therefore, now it would make it invalid for the first brother. Similarly, Ben Teshan, Ben Teshan, oh, Rabbi Shimon, he says, Loi Paisen. He says, no, it does not invalidate the first brother. As the Gemara is going to explain the reasoning for this. Now, Rashi just points out, it has to be talking about that the B of the second brother was a mistake. The other nine-year-old brother, why? Because if it was deliberate, the Gemara needed of Mehemehe Manav tells us that a nine-year-old's Bia is already a Bia. And therefore, actually, we would execute a woman for the B with a nine-year-old. So for sure, it would invalidate her for being Mazana with another man. So obviously, we're talking about where it's because it was Bemezid, that itself would make it problematic. We're talking about Bishaiki. And then Rabbi says, no, it will not invalidate the first ones, the first nine-year-old's Bia. Similarly, Bentes, Shana Biyamecha, Jabal If you have a nine-year-old boy that has B with the Yibam. V'achach Bat Tzavasa, this is like similar, as the Gemara explain. First case is talking about uh, one Yavama and two Yavamin. Here it's going to be one Yavam and two Yavamites. Va'achach Bal Tzavasa. So the nine-year-old boy, he's like a young, innocent boy. He goes and he, his, his, his brother left over uh, five wives. So he goes to the first one and he's like, okay, you're my Yavama. And he marries her. And then he's Bal Tzavasa. The next night he goes and he has beer with the other co-wife. So Paisal. That invalidates for the first Yavama on his own self. He's ruining it for himself. Which, as Rashi points out, for sure for the second one, he's forbidden. Because we know that Allah is ba'is echeru ba'in. He says in the singular, as yibn as beis achiv, he's only allowed to build one house of his brother, and he can't build two houses. Because he already did yibn to the first one, but sure he can't do the second one. Now, but since the beer with the first one is not a full-fledged Kenyan, because again, he's only a cotton, so therefore it's going to work like a mimer, so the Bia with the second one is going to be effective enough to require a get from her. Ah, once you have to have a get from her, so now the whole house is La Yivna, now you can't anymore consummate the relationship with the first one. So his Bia with the Tzara is going to make it that he can't do Yivna anymore with the first one. But if Shem Levi says Lay Paisal, he says no, it does not invalidate him. Why? Rashi explains the logic of Rabbi Shimon. Shimon holds that a nine-year-old's Bia is not what's called Kanye Umeshaya. That like, it's a partial Kenyan, but some of it wasn't done all the way. We, we explained it like that with the Tanakama. Where it's like, okay, it was acquired, but it's not a full-fledged Kenyan, so now other Kenyanim could still take a bag, so it could ruin things. No, he holds, it's what's called Suffolk Kenya, Suffolk Loi Kenya. You're right, a nine-year-old is not like a full-fledged adult, but it's black and white, it's all or nothing. It's either it is kind or it's not. If it's kind of totally kind of, and then the brother's Bia, or his Bia with the Tzava, is not doing anything, or it's not kind of. And if it's like as if he didn't have beer, now with this one, now with this one. So then either way, he would be permitted to stay with the first one. Which obviously says Rashi, the second one he cannot stay with, because maybe the beer of the first one was a beer. And maybe the second one is also because of being by the But the first one says Rib Shimon, in both cases, when it's another nine-year-old boy or another Tzara, this the second one's not going to make it problematic, because either it is or it's not. If it is, everybody was done with the first one. If it's not, then nothing's happening here. So either way, Bishman says, it's not going to invalidate with the subsequent biyam uh, that was done with the second one. <coughs> now the Gemara explains that Allah of the Mishnah, Tani, Ulin, the Braisa. Omlem Rav Shimla Chacham. He says, he explains his rationale, he explains the reasoning of his opinion, why he holds that the second one is not going to make it problematic. He says, look, in Biyah, Rishen, the bia, if the first Biyah is a bia, so then Biyah, Shnei, and the bia, so then Biyah, the second one, it's not a bia, Because, as the Gemara told us, of Nun, the Aleph, in Biyah, Biyah. If you already did a beer with the Yavama, that's it. It's, it's finalized. And therefore, the beer of the second one is like a beer of a regular man. And again, since it was by mistake, so it's not considered being Mazana to make her forbidden as Aisha's is, then she's permitted. <coughs> and in beer, in and if you tell me though, the first one's not a beer, well, beer should not be in the beer, and then the second beer is also not a beer. Again, like we explained with Rashi in the Mishnah, that Rib Shimon holds a different fundamental principle in how you qualify the beer of a minor, of a nine year old boy. It's not like it's partial, it's of the other name. And either way, that means the first one's going to be permitted. That's what Rabbi Shimon is being explained over here in the Bryson. I think one just points out that Masnit in our Mishnah that considers the Bia of the nine year old like a mimer, according to the Tanakhama. And therefore, it says that we know that mimer, acha mimer, takes effect. And 
Again, in our case, it's Bia after Bia, but it's really Bia of a nine-year-old is really like Mimer. So in your own head, translate when you hear Bia of a nine-year-old and Bia of another nine-year-old, or Bia of a nine-year-old with another one that saw this, it's really like Mimer. So it's really essentially like Mimer, Acha Mimer. And we're saying it in two different categories in our Mishnah. We said it by one Yavam and two Yavamas, like the case of the Sefer. And we said it by two Yavam and one Yavama, like the case of the Reisha. We said it by both. That Mimer will work after Mimer, which again, Bia of a nine-year-old will work after that of another one, both by two Yavamas and one Yavam, and both of the cases. <coughs> so then evidently says our Gemara that our Mishnah is like a It must be not like Benazai. Why? Because the time of the Bryce, Benazai, I mean, he says, Yesh Maimer Ha He says, This that we said that you could have one Maimer take effect after another Maimer is only Bishne Yavamin Yavama Achas, which is the ratio of our Mishnah. We have two women and one Yavam. Oh, why over there would we say this is going to be Maimer Ha because both of these women initially, regarding Zika, are equal. Now, the Mimer of the first one is not a full fledged Kenyan, because the Torah tells you the way you kind of give up is with Bia. The Rabbanan tell you that it's going to be effective again because of a Gezeria, as we explained in the base, why we have to say the Mimer is going to take effect. It was really a Gezeria, a concern. So, therefore, the second one's not any less than the first one, because each one of them, the rabbis instituted that this woman, who is a Shemeras Yavam, could have a Mimer. That's where Benazi says we're going to say that it's going to be Maim But the Maim Rachamayim, but we don't say you could have a Maim after Maim by, by, sorry, meaning by two Yavam and a one Yavam, we said it. Meaning by the two brothers, each one of the men has his own Zika with the Shemer Yavam. So that's what we said we're going to say Maim Rachamayim. But we don't say Bishte Yavam is Yavam by two Yavam is two women and one Yavam, meaning because each, um, his whole Kayach and his Kenyan that he has regarding Maim he gave to the first one. So therefore that's actively rejecting the second one. You can't do a, you, it's in the man that you have a kayak to make a maimer. So Benazi says, maimer ha'chamayim is only by two brothers and one, one widow. That's, each one has his kayak a maimer. So we'll say, he gave a maimer, and he'll give a maimer. But when there's two women, two widows and one brother, if he gave a maimer to the first one, you can't say maimer to the second one. So you already gave up all your kayak that you have all the virility that you have for the mimer, you ready to give to the first one. So our mission is evidently not like Benazah, because our mission says it by this halacha of the Bia of the nine-year-old, which is like a mimer, we say it by both cases. We say it with two Yavamas and one Yavam, we say two Yavam and one Yavam. So we say by both cases, evidently our mission is not like Benazah. If you think with this halacha, with a nine-year-old Yavam, says the Mishnah, Ben Testoshon Bimecha, regarding a nine-year-old Shabal Yavimte, that has Bia with his Yavam. And the mace. And he ducks. The Lacha is, now with his widow, Chalitzah's Belay Misademis. You do Chalitzatar, let's see the other brothers, and you don't do Yibu. Why? Because Rashi explains, <coughs> this Yavama has what's called Zika Shne Yavama. She has the Zika of two Yavama. How so? Because Although the nine-year-old boy did Bia, again, you have to translate in your head, whenever the nine-year-old boy does Bia, it's the equivalent of a mimer. When, when, when a Yavam does mimer, that doesn't totally remove the Zika of the first brother who passed away. So, and, but now also there's a Zika of the second brother, this nine-year-old, who she is on some level, was his wife, and now he died too. So the Mishnah teaches in our Ba'ach and the Flam and Avam Abbas, a woman that has Zika's Yavam Echa is the one that you do Yim to. Not if she has Zika Shne Yavam. And therefore she has to do Chalitza because, as we'll explain the Gemara in a little more detail, that the Zika uh, of the second one is really only Rabbinic. So you really have still a Halacha of Chalitza because you're not totally exempted from this. This Halacha of Zika is based Yavam is not, it's not a biblical exemption from the Halacha of Yibam. But uh, it's like a Rabbinic concern Possibly. Back upon him. You can't do Yibu because it's Zika's based Yibam, and you have to do Chalitz. Now, a related case, let's say Nasa Isha. Let's say a nine year old boy marries a woman who is not his Yibama. He's just a regular woman that he marries. And he has a brothers, which, as Tyson points out, even though the Rabbana did not institute marriage for a minor, for a 10 year old boy, the Ri still says there's no Isser. It's not considered be as nos, and it's actually even a mitzvah to marry a woman to your 11 year old boy, let's say. As the says, Sanhedrin, because it says, that if you marry off your children at a young age, that if it even before bar mitzvah, 
a 10 year old boy, it's actually even a mitzvah, says Taisa. So you could have such a case that a boy could get married to a woman, even though Rabban didn't institute that, and a mace, and he dies. So Allah has a reason for So this woman is exempt from Yib. Why? So even though the nine year old's bia is a bia, but he doesn't have kedushin, and the king of a cotton is insignificant until he brings two pubic ears. Now, but by Yavama, Although all the Mishnahis previously were all talking about a nine-year-old doing bia, that's different because since the Torah makes a zika to the brothers of <coughs> the widow of, of, of the of the of the one who died, so the Rabbanan made it like a maim. So that's what rabbinically we consider like like a maim. But regarding him just initially marrying a woman, that has no significance, and this woman's going to be exempt from yibum. Another case: Pentesha shouldn't be a shabal Let's say a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> has beer with his Yavama. Umisha Higdal, and when he becomes an adult, then he's Nasa Acheras. He marries another woman. Umis, and then he dies. So here it's a little complex. But in Loyada said Shaina, if he's never intimate with the first woman, the Yavama, that he married when, let's say, he was a 10-year-old, he was never with a Misha Higdal after he became Bar Mitzvah, after he became an adult. So what's the halacha now with his wives regarding Yibum, because he died without any children? But he's showing the first one, meaning the Yavama that he married, is chalitza of lemis abenas. You do chalitza and not Yibum, because that's like we explained before. She has a zika shnei Yavama, because he was never intimate with her when he became an adult, so she really was never totally moved from the first nefila, because all he did was a bia when he was a 10-year-old, that's like a maimer. If he did a maimer with Yavama, if he dies, she has zikas bez Yavama on her. So she's going to be chalat zivla misabemis. But Shnia, then now the second woman who we married when he was like 15, or chalat zivla misabemis. Are you going to be the chalitza yibim? She's like a regular wife. Shimonai, he disagrees. He says, no. Miyabim le'ezah shayirts. You could do yibim to whichever one you want. Because, as Rashi explains, Shimon does not hold up zika shnei yibamim. Because, like we said earlier, Rib Shimon in the previous Mishnah is, he holds memon of shach. Either it's kinda or it's not. It doesn't hold this like this quasi type of like yeah, kinda mishayer. No. So actually, in Perak Abba Achin, also with there, Shimon uh, disagrees regarding the case of the second one doing maimer and then dying. He says the same thing. There's no halacha of zikis beis yavaman. Even when the second one does a maimer, which that's the classic case of zikis beis yavaman, it doesn't hold like that. He says other uh, other nesh. It, it is kind of not, no chatzi like she's like, bezikas bezikas, you can't have bezikas bezikas, to be old, you can do it whichever you want to, but chaylitz l'shniya, and you do chalitza to the second one. Now the question would be, wait, why are you doing chalitza to the second one? If you hold that it's, what do you hold the status of this woman is? So Rashi explains, because they're not definitely co-wives to exempt one with the yibam of the other one, because maybe, the bia of the nine-year-old, or let's say like the equivalent of a minor of an adult, is insignificant. So that means to say she's really still the, shem- the Yavama of the first brother who died, not from this 15-year-old boy who died. So yeah, you could do yim whichever one you want to, but, but you still would have to chalitza the other one, because you wouldn't know necessarily if they would sell us or not. And Rashi also says, this might be in parentheses, that you can't do even to both because ultimately she is a partial tzava with the rabbinic maimer, which is what the bia of a nine-year-old is, which then people are going to come to say that when you have two yivamas coming from one bias, that you see, oh, you could do even to both. So them. you do even whichever one you want to, not to both, and you have to chalitza to the other one. And the Mishnah qualifies this last halacha, that echad shu ben teshon memechad, all these halachas essentially, that we're talking about regarding a nine-year-old boy, is the same thing if he's even a 20-year-old boy who didn't bring two pubic hairs, they both have the same halachas of the halachas we mentioned before because as long as a, 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 a male does not bring two pubic hairs, he's considered as a cotton. So it's 9 years old or 20 years old. As long as he didn't bring Beisaris, it's the same halacha for all the halachas that we mentioned that let's say his B would be like the maimer of a gun. Now explain the halacha of the ratio of Rabbi. Rabbi says, Adam Rabban, and this did the rabbis say, Zikish ne Yavam, that when this woman who has a Zika of two Yavam, again, which means to say that there was one adult Yavam, who he died, and then a, this 10 year old boy went and did Biyah with this Yavam, 
which is again the equivalent of like, let's an adult doing a minor, which this woman now has zika of two yibam. The law is mechlitz chalitza that you do chalitza yibam, with meyabma that you don't do yibam. Says Rava, loy teman, an important qualification, again also a little complex, but he says, don't say that it's only hechad de iketzah, that only when there's a co wife, meaning, as Rashi gives the background. This halacha was brought in Perka Ba'achen, uh, earlier in this Mesechta, where the Mishnah was teaching, if you have three brothers that are married to three unrelated women, and he said one of them died, he said, what happens if the second one does a mimer, a mimer, and then he dies? Oh, Mishnah said, so you have to do chalitza and not do yibam. So the Gemara says that if the Isser of Zikis Bez Yibaman is Deiraisa, and that, like, she's not a regular Yavama, because she has Zikis Bez Yibaman, so you shouldn't require even Chalitza. Why saying Chalitza Yibaman is Yavama? I understand you can't do even for Zikis Bez Yibaman. So why are you doing Chalitza? So the Gemara says, no, the halacha is Rabbinic. It's Rabbinic halacha. Now, if that's the case, so then, so then why did you do Yibam to both of them? What's the Rabbinic concern? The Gemara says, oh, it's a Gezer. What's a Gezer? Because the Ikala Mixer says, our Gemara, I mean, our Gemara is saying, don't say that. And we're explaining why don't say that, because based on the Gemara in Perk Dal Achen, you would have said this. And that's what Rav is coming to exclude from this. Don't say, oh, because, yeah, the Ikala Mixer, Mishim Tzala. Because people might say that, wait a second, I see two Yavamas coming from one bias, and they're doing Yibum. So, because of the concern of the co-wife, we're going to say that you can't do Yibum, because then people might think, even though really it's not from the same bias, but people might think it's coming from the same bias, therefore that's why you can't do Yibum. But therefore you have to do Chalitza. Says Rabbi, no, don't say that. You know how I know don't say that? Because oh, like it's Tzara, over here, there's no co-wife. And even so, I mean, the first wife we had was only, he was just, did this, this 10-year-old boy was only did one marriage, was to the Yavama, and he did be with her. And then what's the Allah of the Mishra saying? You do chalitza, you don't do yibam. So therefore, you see, obviously, that the halacha of Zikas Bez Yavama is not only when there's a concern that, well, it might look like he was, she was his wife. And then he's dying, and then you're doing yibam to both of them? The truth is really nothing was done because it's a mimer or because it's a be <coughs> of a ten year old. And really she's still the Yavama of the first one. And really you should be able to do be it to both of them, to do even to the first one and to the second one. But just that it might look like two wives in the same house. So therefore don't say that's the reason. Because our mission doesn't have a tzava. And still you tell me by Zikis Bez Yavaman is Michlitz Khatsi Bamalamiyam. So Rabbi says, I proved my point. But Chigmur later on is gonna explain, so what is the Allah Why? Where is Zikis Bez Yibam coming from then? The, what, that the halacha is that you do chalitza and, and you don't do yibam. That we're going to explain shortly. But Rav is pointing out definitely not like you would have thought from Perik Dal Achen. That's my three brothers. And then there's a tzara that he had. He had a wife already. Everyone was married to a woman already. And you're going to do yibam to that one. You're going to do yibam to that one too. People are going to think it's coming from the same bias. But it's from the first brother. That's not the reason. Now I think Mark goes back and continues with the halacha of the Mishnah. We said another case in the Mishnah spoke about was Nasa Isha. If the minor married a woman, who masonly died, Bakhu, etc., which we said that his wife is going to be exempt from Yibam and from Chalitza. So the Gemara says, Tani Lord, the Dharma, this supports what we live in the Brisa. Shaita Bakatan, Shanasu Vemesu, a mentally deranged person or a minor marries a woman and they die. And she's saying, Betuchas, Men Chalitza, Yibam, their wives are exempt from Chalitza and Yibam, like we said, that even though Taisi even brought, might be even a mitzvah to marry off your son, but there's no Kenyan here at all. So I can say, Ishtai, and therefore, it's not going to be Yibam and Chalitza. So what we said in the Mishnah, Ben Tesha Bechulu. We said that if a nine-year-old boy is Baal Yavimtai, and then we said Mishahigdal Bechulu, when he becomes an adult, he marries another woman. So he said, you do Yibam to the second woman, whereas the first one that he was never intimate with, the Allah is going to be, like we said, because she's going to be with the Zikis Bez Yabam. Now, Bechulu, etc. So the Gemara asks that V'yasu Biyaz Ben Tes. Why don't you make which seemingly we were saying all along, the be of a nine-year-old in the Yavama is Kamayma Bagat. That's what we're saying all along in this dot. Nine-year-old's Bia is like an adult's Maima. If that's the case, so it says, I don't understand. So that should reject the co-wife, meaning his full-fledged wife, 
The one he married when he was 15 years old should reject her migibum from gibum. Why? As Rashi gives the background, like the Gemara then Perik Daladatan tells us, the Mishnah said, Harei elu chalitzais. All of them you do chalitza. Even the full-fledged wife gets rejected because she's what's called tsaras balas zikas neyavam. She's the co-wife of the woman who has the zika of two yavamen, which that makes her also invalid. So why is our Mishnah saying that the second woman, the one that he married when he was 15 years old, you could eat a chalitza yibum, but the one that Zika is based on that he married when he was 10 years old, that he did yibum, which, and he never was intimate with her after he became an adult. So she's, she's flawed because she's Zika's based on and he never fully got rid of the Zika, the first brother, so you hurry up the chalitza and not yibum, but the second one? Eat a chalitza yibum. How? Isn't she, isn't she tzaras, balas, achleis, of Zika's based on so Amar Rav, he says, no, you're making a mistake. Like also, be is ben tes, kamayim b'gadol. They did not make the be of a nine-year-old like a maimer by a gadol. And although a maimer b'gadol, we said in Perik Dalar Achen, would make her into that of Zikis Beis Yivaman, and then her tzaga would also be problematic, that doesn't apply by a nine-year-old boy. We don't give it that halacha. Which Mami says, no, it's not true. Asu asu. No, they did and they did. They did and they did. No, it's not true. As we were saying all along in this daf, the nine-year-old's beer is like a, an adult's mimer. So then why, do, why are we saying that it's... So the Gemara actually asks, so, so the Gemara says, according to Rabbi Yechon and according to Shmuel, why did they say that they could do even to the second wife, make the heart into the tzara of a bala zikis bez yivama, which you said regarding a mimer of a god, he said, and break and this can make her invalid. Why not, why not the same thing in our Mishnah? So the Gemara, good question, but tanoihi. It's a machlekes tanoi. Don't ask from Perik Dalar Achim because it's actually machlekes with our Mishnah. Hach Tana Darba Achim the Tana Perik Dalar Achim, he was Gaza. He made a gzera that Mishun Tzara because of the Kohen. And this way actually relates back to what Rabbah had said previously regarding the differentiation of the rationale, the reasonings why we say that the Zikas Bezivaman is problematic. The Tana in Perik Dalar Achim said that it looks like. That these two women are coming from Bayis It looks like they're both from the same husband. And because of the co-wife, we're going to say that she becomes forbidden. And the truth is, Vashmin Bekabal. You're right, the Tana they just happened to tell us regarding an adult with a mimer. But before the Bekabal, you're right, the Tana in Perik Dalad Achman hold. The same thing would apply with the B of a nine-year-old. That Dalach would be that the other wife that he married when he was 15 would also be in Val. I've I done a God. Why do you say that it's with the case of a god with a mime. That's, that was the case was talking about a god. But the equivalent, of course, would be with a bee of a nine year old. Would be the same thing, not like the Allah of our Mishnah. Now, the high time, the Hacha, in contrast, the time of our Mishnah that holds that you could do Yibum with the wife that he married when he was an adult, that was a full fledged marriage. Svirla, he holds that, yes, also they made the bee of a nine year old like that of a 15 year old, like a, like a mime of an adult, but. They didn't have this gezerah because of a co-wife. Meaning, as we mentioned from Rabbi previously, the halacha of the zikas beis yavamin is learned from a pasuk, which it says that when it's only one wife, not when she's a wife of two brothers. So therefore, we're saying ba'ashmini b'katan. We told this to you by a minor, but you're right. But our time of our mission would disagree in the case of the Perik Dalar Achen. We hold that even over there, there's no problem about a tzava. We're not concerned that, oh, wait a second, it looks like there's two Yavamas from Bayezak. That's not why we said that the woman has to do chalitza not yibam. No. The Allah of Zikis Bez Yavaman is learned out from a Pasik and that we see that it's only when she has one Zikah, not two Zikah. And that's why she can't do yibam. No, since only rabbinic, she needs to do chalitza. So that's nothing to do because, of, oh, wait a second, it looks like you're doing even to the other one, you're doing even to this one too, it looks like basically, well, no, it's not true, it wasn't guys, it's not coming from halacha b'tzava. So, and therefore that never affects the other woman, because it's not the reasoning why she's possible. No, it's no, it's no error over here to say that, oh, the tzava should be problematic. No. So, Rashmin Vakat, we said this by a minor, by the Megillus, and it would apply in the uh, minor and adult. I become a cotton, so now why did we say the halacha be'en our mission regarding the be'er a cotton? Because the cotton, because the mission is not a cotton. But the truth is that the tzavah is going to be mutter not only by a be'er of a cotton, but also by the mimer of a gadol. There's no problem. It has nothing to do with the tzavah to make hard that you can't do yibum or chalitza with the 
other full-fledged wife. Now the Gemara brings a story related that Ozl Rebbe Lazar, Amal Shmaita Ben Midrasha, he said over this teaching in the Bisa Medrash that they made the bia of a nine-year-old like the mimer of, of an adult. He didn't say which we just mentioned before. Shmuel and Rebbechen were both the ones that are asu asu that we made the bia of a nine-year-old like the mimer of a god. A god. Rebbe Lazar said over the teaching, and he didn't say over the name of Rebbechen. Shmuel and Rebbechen, Rebbe Rebbechen heard this and he was very bothered by this. So Olagabe, because it was his own teaching, and it wasn't saying it was his own name. So Olagabe, Rebbechen, 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 Rebbechen came over to him, and normally they said to Rebbechen, wasn't there, remember there was a story in the shul in, in Tiberia, and what happened was that there was benegr shesh beresh glustera, there was a bolt that has a knob on the top of it, meaning the top of the bolt was very thick, and it was fit to grind garlic and to use for other utility. Shnech where there was a disagreement regarding locking a door with it on Shabbos between Rebbe Laza and Rebbe Yisi. Rebbe Laza held you cannot use it to lock on Shabbos because that would be a problem about Baina, because you're building it. Rebbe Yisi says, no, it has a lock of a kli, and if you're allowed to move it, because you could use it for grinding, it's not, it doesn't have a problem of a, of a, of a Baina, it's, it's a kli. And they had such a dispute, until they tore a Sevetar in their anger. The Gemara says, whoa. Karas like a day, like Tess explains, Karas sounds like intentionally. You think they, they, they got so upset that they took a Sevetar and they tore it? El Eben or rather says, Shenikra Sevetar B'cham Asam. That they were, they were humbling and showing and, and pushing at elbows and saying, look at this Pasuk and look at that. And in their anger, the Sevetar tore. So you see, they calm down, like you're getting very worked up and this, this you know, getting upset. Look what could happen when someone gets upset. And B'hai Yishom Rebizim and Kisma, actually in that story in Tveria, Yisuf Kisma was there. Um, he says to me, he says, I, I wonder. I wonder if this shul will not become a house of idol worship. But can't happen. That's actually what happened. Look what happened. So Hadi Ikvit Feir. Yisuf got even more upset. Um, he says, Chabrusa Nami. He says, You're making my student now into my colleague. You bring me a proof from a story between Rambam and Yisuf who were colleagues, and you're saying, Oh, look what happened. You don't get angry. He says, And this is my tama. Now he got even more upset. So Ula Gabe Rabbi Yaakov Eidi. Rabbi Yaakov Eidi came to to Rabbi Yechon. And Amalei said to him, according to Pasuk in Yeshua, Pasuk says, "Kasher Tiva Hashem is Moshe Abdi." Like Hashem commanded Moshe his servant, "Kain Tiva Moshe is Yeshua." So too, how Hashem commanded Moshe, and Moshe commanded Yeshua. Bechinos Yeshua, and so too Yeshua did. Lahesed Dava Mekal Hashem Tiva Hashem is Moshe. He didn't remove anything that Hashem commanded to Moshe Abenu. So the Pasuk was t- testifying that whatever Yeshua did was from the mouth of Moshe Abenu, even what. Yeshua said unspecified. Now, says the Gemara, you think that anything that Yeshua said, everything he said, he said, Moshe Benin told me this? Uh, it says Rashi, it's not possible everything Yeshua said that he's going to say, Moshe Benin told me this. And even so, the Pasuk is testifying that it was Mepi Moshe. So how is that possible? So the Elder says, 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 this is what he told Rabbi Yechim. He says, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua was sitting and expounding unspecified. But everyone knows that it was the Torah of Moshe Beinu, and therefore he didn't have to say it. After Belaza Tamitcha, so to you student Belaza Yeshem Derish Tamira, he's just giving drushes without specifying. Everyone knows to come from the Rebbe, it's coming from you. So I'm going to end. and said to them, Why don't you guys know how to peace like our friend Benidi? He knew to say the right things to calm me down. Now since you remember, Bichim, my time a cup of cool head. Why was the Bichim so bothered? So particularly, he didn't get the credit, didn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't rolling the credit, it wasn't saying, well, why do, why do you care so much? This is a very important idea. I'm going to read the It says, it wasn't in the Pasuk and Tehillim. Agurah bo'elech o'ilam. David Melech is saying, I want to dwell in your tents, o'ilam mim. Which could either be read forever, but it's also, o'ilam mim is the plural of worlds. Which, as Tais explains, when the person's neshama is in yeshiva shamala, that his lips are moving here in the grave as if he's speaking, so it's like as if he's dwelling in two worlds at the same time. So it says, Is it possible for a person to dwell in two worlds? Rather, what David was saying to Tarkadish Baruch was, Rebellion the master of the world. He got to let it be the will as a getting top of Tzad, Isaiah Medala, that they say over teachings of my, of my mouth in this world. So that my lips should be moving in the grave as if I'm alive. He says, Anytime that they say over teaching of his in this world, his lips are moving are, are in the grave. 
And therefore, he's very particular because if you say Ruben his name, he, his lips are going to be moving and he's going to be talking even when he passes away. Some say with Shimon Nazira, appropriate for this week's parasha. My Krav, what does the Pasik mean in Shir Hashirim? The Chichet. And the words of your palate, Kiyain Hatayba, like the good wine. It goes to my beloved straight. That the, the lips of the sleeping are moving. What does that mean? Like a, a pile of grapes. Meaning, means it's moving. Like something that's bubbling. Which the kaimer is the vat that you put the grapes in until it heats up. And then the wine flows out easily. So, just like the pile of the grapes. Once a person puts his finger on it, right away it starts moving and flowing and bubbling to the top. Once you say what we're teaching from them, their mouth in this world, it's the same. David's vocabulary, the lips are moving in the grave. And if that's why Rebbe is very particular, that it should be said over in his name. Thank you to anything.